Hi, in this video I'll share with you how to use the Binance volume monitor to actually day trade the things that you see pop up here. I, I use this to day trade some of the things that pop up here. I don't trade everything and I'll get into that here in this video. I'll share some tips and advice on how to use this, uh, share a little bit about what this does. There is a video by the person that created it and you should watch that. I, I think for most people uh, from me sharing this before, they still didn't get it. He doesn't do a good job of really explaining the kind of power of what's here. Uh, but uh, you should watch that video. I'm actually going to reach out to him as well because there's some things I like to add to this uh, and modify it. Even if I just got to modify it and use it myself, I will. So uh, I'll, I'll jump in here. Now, once again, I use this to day trade uh, outside of my external trade. So I day trade Big Bitcoin, uh, ETH and swing trade and then i day trade a couple things and then i when i see something here like wtc i will possibly swing trade that so this is a good example uh like wtc here's the key of what you're watching now when you first visit this page you're not going to see anything because it's a live scanner and what this scanner does basically is you see this number here net volume basically the way to look at that, and if we go through here, we're going to see WTC is pumping. And if I wasn't recording this video, I probably would be trading this right here. Uh, so you'll see here, there's a pump right here. There's a rise in price, and we're on one-hour bars. So if I go to the five-minute bars, look at that. There is a rise, and then there's another rise, okay? So what this scanner is doing, and if we go to the volume monitor is see it popped up again now this is an awesome one to trade uh, right now so you wouldn't trade it yet and this is a good this is a good lesson on how to use this actual scanner so you'll notice wtc popped up down here okay so i've had this open all day it actually popped up down here as well okay so the first time that you see something and let me take a step back so you know i'm not just making this stuff up uh here's a spreadsheet see all these symbols down here here's a spreadsheet of me spending hours tracking price action and one of the most successful one that i did was vib so i while i was tracking this uh and putting everything in this spreadsheet and figuring out kind of how the best way to actually use this scanner i was actually day trading this i think i traded this 10 to 14 times at the same time tracking it so this isn't something, you know, I've, I've really analyzed what happens here, okay? So here's the way to look at it, and this, this is great that this is live right now. WTC is happening. So I'm actually, I'm going to pause the video because I'm going to trade this. Okay, so this is a really good, once again, a really good live example of this. So here's the way to look at this too, is that if we watch WTC, there's going to be a pullback here, which is good. So... What you want to watch for, what you want to watch for is the first time that it would pop up. So you'll see here WTC popped up down here. It actually popped up way down here. So what you would do is you would watch your chart, okay? And that first actual, that first jump was right here. So see this little green bar? I'm on five minute bars here. That first jump was right here. And basically what this monitor is doing, if you if you can't figure it out is basically it's saying that this is a net volume of 591 uh just just look at the number as if it's above uh the higher the number the better basically it means that there's more buyers like w within that minute like statistically compared to what's typically there it's probably not exactly what it's doing but you'll see it's a 9.9 percent increase in net volume a 9.6 increase in net volume here a 9.1 an 8.7 so what you want to do is first up if you only see it once like you'll see here qsp it popped up well what that would mean is you'd probably want to open up your chart and take a look and you look at and see what's happening so qsp it looks like it's it's had some volume but it's been stuffed basically the buyers have not been able to get past that right so i would look at the one hour bar and see where we are so this might actually be another good trade as well because one hour it's it's on a 
it's been on a downtrend, so it, it's something you want to get out quick. But you can see here, it's it's kind of down for the day. Now, BTC just dropped uh, $100 here in the last uh, five minutes. So uh, that's something to watch. But uh, so as we go here and, and go back to WTC, you'll see here the volume monitor, it hasn't popped up again, right? So this is something that you want to watch closely. Basically, what you're looking for is as soon as it pops up, you open up that chart and you kind of see what's going on. And ideally, you want to catch it uh, like as it's like here, right? The problem with that is that keep in mind, every indicator that you use is always a historical indicator. This is what happened in the past. This happened four minutes ago. So it's no longer accurate. So while you can look at this and say, okay, well, this is this is showing an uptrend. I mean, look, it's it's here, H7, 91, 96, 99. We haven't seen it pop up again since I've been recording this video. That means it's probably on a pullback, which is good because what you want to do on these type of things is play the pullbacks. If you miss the first initial run up or the second initial run up, you can play the pullbacks. So you'll see it's starting to pull back here. And the easiest way to do this is you got to look for support. You got to look into the chart and you got to say, where is support? So I use uh, Coinigy here to do a lot of this. So this is okay. But I mean, you, you want to look at, you know, there's some type of support. I mean, there's a, there's a buy wall right here at 3,400. The problem with that uh, right now that's this buy wall right here, this guy, this guy, whoever it is at 34 Bitcoin. That's not real. This is a this is a pump right here. This is not real. This 34 uh, Bitcoin right here that you see right here can go away in an instant. It's actually used. It's, it's being used right now to support the price level of where it's at to get everybody to jump before this person. Right. And they're actually not doing a good job either. So if they were doing a better job. What I'm saying is that they would be putting it within the window of where the price action is happening. So they would put it right around 3,500, 3,506. You put you put an order like that. The people that are seeing this screen here will see it here. And right now, the only people that really see this, I see it pops up every now and then. The only people that really see this are the people that are um, you know looking at the depth screen, for instance. So you'll see here. Here's what you want to do. Uh, and hopefully I'm being clear, we go back to the volume monitor, it hasn't popped up again. So I would be a little concerned about entering this trade because it might be slowing down, okay? So if we go back here and look at WTC, you'll see it kind of has. It's It's gone, it's tested, and it's gone down. I hate these charts. Let's go here. So here, uh, I'm looking at it on Coinigy. Now you'll see here I'm looking at three-minute uh, candles. And... I suggest uh, what I do is in Coinigy, I watch it in three minute candles here and then on the exchange uh, because you can't trade in Coinigy with uh, with um, Binance uh, on the exchange. If we go to the exchange, where is it at? On the exchange, I have one minute bars because keep in mind you're day trading this. The other thing I'll mention here and I know I'm bouncing around, but I'm trying to trying to provide the best advice here. Don't just look at one hour and this is, uh, I say, this is a relatively risky trade. And the reason why I say that is because, yes, there's, there is an upside a couple days ago right here. But right now, for today, we are at an all-time high. So, so far for today, we're at an all-time high for today. I mean, it's reached an all-time high for today. And the human mind and traders have a tendency to assume that things are going to go up and they anchor to this. So you'll look at this and like, okay, well, wow, look at that upside. We've got a 9% upside. Uh, what they don't think about is, you know, always assume something's going to go down. What they don't think about is, oh, geez, look at this. If I would have bought here yesterday on that pump, it went down 8% within uh, five hours. Now, given... Uh, if you're doing this, you need to stop out at 2%. So if this trade goes against you 2%, uh, you know, 
down to here, you need to get out of the trade. All right. And you wouldn't enter here anyways. Well, we'll see. If we look at the three hour bars, you want to enter probably right around here. So if we pull up this, you probably want to enter right around here. Uh, let's do that. You want to enter right around here, maybe above this tick, maybe above right here, maybe. Now, keep in mind, this depends on what's happening. Let's check our scanner again. It hasn't popped up again. So basically, this has slowed down. Now, that doesn't mean it won't pop up again, but basically what this means is that this, this is happening every minute. So this scanner is scanning every minute. Now, if we look at the depth chart on this, and the depth chart is usually not that helpful, but the reason why is because you can kind of see what's playing out in real time. The closer to real time this depth chart is, the more realistic or re reliable it is. Once again, this is that buy wall. It's fake. This is, I don't know what this buy wall is. Well, it's 17. So that's kind of interesting. There's another one here, but it's not real. You know, so I when I say it's not real, it's on the books, but these orders have no intention of going through. They're just using it to actually pump the price. They're using it so people will jump in front of them. will say, oh, wow, look, I got support here. I got support here. Real support on this chart, if we look at it, and hopefully this is helping. Real support, if we look at this chart, is probably, and you can draw these on here, is probably right about here right now. Meaning that... Uh, and that's light support. I mean, I'm not saying it's it's strong. I'm just saying that if you were to buy here in the next, you I, I think you would be okay within the next hour, meaning it would probably pop back up here, right? Now, these things usually trace back at least a half, right? So down here. So the scenarios, if you're looking to trade this, and the only way you would right now, given what I'm seeing right now, is that if there continues to be monitoring of WTC on here okay so one thing to say is is when you see red that does mean um, that means that it's five pings or more basically it, it's it's the start of something based on however this scanner is built right yellow means that you should start watching it very closely so what usually happens is you see WTC just pop up and then you see it red I found, and look, uh, do your own research, all that other stuff, right? I found that when it turns red after being, you know, just kind of rising a little bit, that's usually means you're kind of safe to enter because you're going to see some upswings, okay? So that's that's one that's one way to look at it. The other thing that, that I do usually, because I usually, I'm very risk adverse. So I'm usually... Uh, playing these dips. So basically, what I'm doing is every now and then I will I, I will get lucky and and not even lucky. I will be able to actually enter a position right here, and then ride it up. And then I'm watching the, the volume scanner as well. And as I'm watching it, I'm one I'm I'm taking profit a little bit of profit here, and then I'm I'm usually riding it back up. And then I would enter, I would re-enter another position here and then write it back up and then re-enter another position here. Now I'm showing that here, obviously, but it's not that simple, obviously, because right now this is real time, you know, so I'm going to just go through and say what I would do here, given what I see. Uh, the problem is I have uh, multiple monitors, so it's hard for me to kind of just go between these, this one monitor. I'm not used to it. So uh, let's say... I would probably, I'd probably still stick to this here, this entry. I mean, you've got about a two to three percent upside. The key with doing these trades is that you got to get in on a dip below where it closes. Uh, so what I mean is that you need like this candle here. If we scroll in, this candle right here. See this green candle where it has a tail, I guess it's called a shadow. You would have wanted to position your trade right here. So, and 
usually what you're looking for is other support at that level as well. So this is a, uh, you know, three nine, um, three four, three thirty four hundred. So if we go to WTC, you know, you would one thing you could do. What I usually do, I don't. I look at the depth chart real quick, and I kind of say, okay, is there actual support there? And then what I would do is I actually go here and look at the actual order book. That's not real. 17 Bitcoin's not real. This seven might be real, possibly. That's a decent order for this book. So I might, I if I saw that, I might put an order here at, at 4810. One of the tips I can give just in general trading is that don't, you know, if you're looking to enter a position, getting in at five or getting at 11 will not make a difference where your differences is, is is 50. So a, a, a four to five swing doesn't matter. Now, one of the things with entries with this type of stuff is that oftentimes if you are, I notice this person's right at three, four, seven, nine, nine, right? You know, in some ways it's hard to tell if this is real. And the reason why I say that is because I, I guess uh, the problem is, is you're just below a whole number. And what you're doing is that you're providing support to everybody else because basically I'm going to do this as well. I'm going to watch it at this point. I'd enter at, because right now on the books, this is what's on the books, but this is so far down in everybody's mind, right? This price right now is so far down. The closer we get to this price, people start to position. So what I usually do is is I'd say, okay, well, there is there's support on the books at this given time at 34799. Uh, the next order that's uh, that is a decent size relative to this chart is, and I know this is hard with the jumping around, is around 3834. So I would probably split the difference and do 3815. Now, I'm not logged in or anything, so... I don't do that when I record because I don't want to accidentally trade. But I would probably enter right there. I'd verify that there's a psychological number there as well. And then I would watch it because as we get further down to this price, what's going to happen is that people are going to start positioning above this support that's at 34799. Three, okay. Now, if we look at the, the candlesticks and um, we look at our volume monitor, oh, see, it popped up again. That's a good sign, and, and it's increasing too. So that's a good sign. So see, the net volume is increasing, and the actual the uh, number is increasing. So it's six six uh, the pings or not the pings. Well, the pings are increasing, but the net volume as well. It's going to go back up, and so you'll see it has a little bit of pullback. Let's look at the depth chart, see what's there. So it's got a little bit of a pullback, and now it's going to rise back up. Now, what you would have done in all that talking I was doing as well is that uh, you would be maybe looking um, to enter. The problem is I've seen these things. They the, the problem is right now entering here while what you're seeing on the volume monitor is positive, right? So what we see here is positive. Well, it popped up again. You know, I guess I'd be I'd be okay entering this trade. You know, the problem is I never buy a green bar, so and I miss out on a lot of trades that I could do. All right, so this is and because I I've I have rules that I follow that one whenever I break them I regret it. So for instance, I don't buy this green bar. I would position myself right here. And what would happen is that, uh, and this changes, obviously, it's a minute by minute thing. So if we go to minute bars, I don't know why my trade thing went away. So I would probably, you could reason people that are looking to trade this and to scalp, they're going to look at this and they're going to say, well, there's support. Well, depends how you draw support. There's support here, right? There's, <laughs> don't really call that support, but I guess we could call this support here in this window, right? 
So in this little, in this 2% uh, window, if the price gets down to this at this given time, it's probably going to bounce up to here, right? So you've got about a 3% window. So see a dip there. This actually probably is a good buying opportunity. So here, this is why you'd want to put your price below support. So see it dipped here. If you were to put your, your order down here above this tick mark at 35,600, you would have got caught in there and you'd already have, you'd already be on a, you know, 4.9% 4, 4 upside. And if the monitor was still showing up, so it is, it popped up again and it's rising, which is good. So if we go back here, if you were to put your order right in here, not up here. Keep in mind, we were up here, remember? Not up here. Because the problem is, is that this can turn in an instant. And how this turns in an instant, and I hope this is helping. I know I'm bouncing around a lot. How this can turn in an instant, if we go here, is that these people, whoever it is, I mean, this is a pump. I mean, it's so obvious. Uh, these people that are, well, they're not even on the books anymore because it took over, which is good. So it took over. So what you want to watch for during these scenarios is a big order that pops up on the sell side that puts up basically a sell wall. Because basically what they're doing, they're, they're doing their, uh, what's happening is they'll put a sell wall up here. It'll depress the price down to here, okay? And then they're going to pick up more positions. They're going to put another buy wall, and then it's going to push it back up. They're going to make three to five percent, three to seven percent, three to you know ten, you know ten percent. So what they're doing is that they're a lot of times this this one they're not it's not quite showing up yet. Uh, but the more sophisticated ones that you see when you when you trade this way is that they'll just depress it and then let it go. Depress it and then let it go depress it and then let it go and what they're doing is they're acquiring on each, they're acquiring on each dip they're acquiring on each dip so they've already acquired way down here so before this they've already acquired over here right they've already acquired well before this okay then they go through and then and you know this doesn't always work but i'd say it works 80 percent of the time that i see it it's done and then they're buying on every dip on the way up as well. So they've, they've already got an initial position. They've already got the initial position to be able to, to play both sides. And then they're basically uh, they're riding it all the way up. Now, this is an interesting scenario what's happening right now. You'll see that on the one minute bars, it's starting to dip. So it's losing some steam. So uh, I'm not seeing it pop up here again. If we go here, See, this is why, see how quick it's turning against you? This is why you don't buy up here. Because you buy a green bar, you know, here, if you would have bought here where, where I suggested, you're still, you're only down 0.4%, right? Or 0.38%. And people that are looking at the one hour bar, if we look at the three minute bar, one of the things I, I, I didn't mention is you should be going between these bars. You should be looking and kind of seeing what are people at different time frames seeing, right? This is the overall trend. So you should be doing this. So you'll see on the 30 minute, we're still up, but the, the sellers are winning, right? Uh, and if we go on the one hour, you know, we're, we're basically at, I mean, we're still up, right? But the sellers are kind of taking over a little bit for, for the meantime. So if you go to the five minute bar, you see we're dipping. So trying to provide a real example of where you might enter this I mean you could enter here probably that's what that's support and then here so if we actually go to WTC so you see it dipping let's see there is artificial support at three four well there's another support line here so look, they're trying to resupport it here with this 17 Bitcoin order right here, uh, and you can see there's people jumping ahead. Um, we'll see what's happening. I mean, you could trust that. You could say, "Well, look, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm going to here." The problem, the challenge, and it's not quite happening, is that 
I see this time and time again. Uh, this, and you'll really see it in the depth chart because this will stay here for a while until either they realize that the that there's the the buyers just unartificially are are starting to take over, right? And then there's just not buyers or the sellers are unartificially taking not taking over, meaning that uh, at some point in time the buyers just say, "Oh, it's not going to get that high. I need to sell out," right? Or the people looking to scalp are saying, "Hey, I'm happy with my four or five percent. I'm going to get out." But you'll see here, it's still being supported by two basic, basically fake buy walls. Uh, the, I, I say fake. I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm 99% sure, but. I say fake because if I'm going to acquire this, okay, and I have 17 Bitcoin worth and I want to acquire it for the best price possible, I'm not going to telegraph my position. I'm not going to sit here and I know we're going into a little bit longer video of just this volume monitor, but look, it's still popping up. So you're probably good to buy the dip. Uh, so. Because one of the things that, the, so, and, and not to lose my place, but uh, I know I'm going in a couple different tangents, but to trade this volume on it, you have to kind of understand what's going on here. Most of these that you're seeing on these volume, some of them are real. Some of them are people jumping in. Most of them are supported by some kind of artificial buy wall or some kind of artificial nature of what's going on with that chart. See it time and time again. So this is actually probably a good entry position if you could have got in down here. All right. So if we go back here, you could have got in down here as well. See, this is where I drew the support here, right? What you usually want to do is you want to look for the support lines on like the three minute chart and then go above that. Otherwise, you're going to miss the trade. So, you know, you'd probably want, I probably would have entered a little bit up here. So I would have been here uh, based on kind of what I see. Now, based on the volume monitor that we see right now, you see it hasn't popped up again. That means we're, it's probably, you know, once again, it's slowing down maybe a little bit where you look at this as a reaffirming of what you're seeing on the chart, I should say. And basically right now, it's not reaffirming that there's still steam here. OK, so if we go back to WTC, you can see even in the chart, it's slowing down. And if we actually look at the depth chart, uh, you'll see, I mean, there's still that buy wall there. Uh, still there but you'll see just generally it's slowing down now this might be a buying opportunity this is where you can also look at this and say okay well it's slowed down here at this point maybe you missed this entry position and you'll see here and maybe you enter so no I mean you look it dipped back down so this is why one of the things that I'm, I'm trying to provide uh, tips and advice here. The challenge is, is that uh, I I wouldn't have entered I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have entered here. But I'm telling you what you could have done. Uh, just because I I'm very risk adverse, meaning that if I enter here, I, I want to enter where I think that other people on the chart are looking uh, for support, uh, and where I feel is low enough where if there's a bounce and it's a small bounce, I'm out in two or three percent, right? So most people, and let me, so hopefully this will help. So most people, they would enter this trade and they would say, well, here's my upside, right? I'm not saying that I don't know most people. I'm just from what I see, okay, and, and from me teaching and training some people, they will look at this and say, well, the price went all the way up here. I'm going to go just below that and just below this tick mark, and I'm going to maximize my upside. There I've got a potential 3.69% profit. I'll put my stop at, you know, 2 or I, I'd stop out at 2% because there's another support level. Because the other thing that you want to do is when you buy at this position, you want another support level at different levels of the chart. So this is a support level. I mean, the price went down to here, but then it bounced up. So, uh, and if we go to the 10-minute, the 
it's still kind of a support level at the 10 minute. I mean, when I say support, it's it's not su it's support on the upside because it bounced from there, right? But keep in mind, this is all relative because this is such weak support. It's not like really, I, I wouldn't consider it reliable support, right? So, but as you see here, as I go on through timelines, you can see the different support levels. So this is becoming support right now because see, it's bounced off that, it's tested it again. And it's and it's become support again. Okay, so for the meantime, it's it, it it well just jumped up. But for the meantime, it might bounce between here and there. And then if you see it pop up in the volume monitor again, which we don't see it pop up yet, let's check out here. If you see it pop up again, that means it might jump. So this is this is a good example. So if we would have bought here this this entry, most people are looking for their profit here. You know, I would be considering getting out. Uh, I might have already got out here, or if I saw what what's going on right here, you know, I would get out. Let's say that this bar didn't print yet, and remember my example is most people would get out here. I would get out right here below this tick mark right at 232 and then I would get out there that would be my entry that would be my entry and my exit now see how it popped up and then went down I would have been out already and I would have been safe instead if you would maximize your profit you would be here and you'd still be waiting for for it to go up to the upside where I usually get out is right under 3% you know right at 2325 depends on the chart depends on the tick marks depends on where I enter but of course, you know, in this trade, you know, since I'm recording this, most likely what's going to happen, this is going to shoot way past. Probably what's going to happen is it's going to go way up here. It's going to go up 20% in the next two minutes, and uh, I'm going to look like an idiot. The key here is that I've, I've actually tried to do this, and it does, I've, I've been hurt more. So I'm, I would, if you want to ride the upside, here's what you do. Take 75% of what you traded, take it out right here to protect your capital. Let the rest ride. Yeah, you're not making as much as you if you kept it all in, but as you can see here, it's not it's it's trying to reach this high, but it's not quite getting there. And it's having a little bit of a pullback. Now we're on three minute bars. If we look at one minute bars, you can kind of see it's it, it's 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 kind of doing that if we go to the five minute bars. So the key is, unless you see validation through the volume monitor, right? That, and it is validating. So, you know, we're probably still safe to stay in this trade and, and, and to see what happens. The key is if it turns against you, you got to get out pretty quick. And it's starting to go down on the one, bar, one, one uh, minute bar. Here's another thing that I've learned from this too, and I hope this is helpful. No, I, I thought I was going to do this in 15 minutes. So the other thing with this is that this can turn on you in an instant. So I would be in this trade and I would say, okay, well, that's positive. That's been rising. I mean, it's 11.1 .1 here. It's 10.8. Keep in mind, this is the that was maybe a minute ago or two minutes ago, okay? So, you know, I don't know if this is in the last minute or two minutes ago. That's the past. What's happening this minute, uh, as you can see, the signal just told us, hey, it should be rising or it's set to rise. The problem that you might not realize is that the buyers or the sellers suddenly said, oh, you know what? I need to sell. And they outweigh what you just saw a minute ago that can turn in a minute, especially when it runs up like this. So when it runs up like this, right, 12% in, let's see, what's the time frame there? 12% in one hour, right? 13% in one hour, which is, you know, does happen on this chart every now and then, right? So 50 minutes, 4.8, but that's not normal. I mean, it happens every now and then, but it's not normal. When it runs up like that, people that bought down here, people that bought here, people that bought here, people that bought on the way up, they're all saying, oh, it, it can't, you know, 
it, it's got to slow down. It's got to slow down. And keep in mind, this is real time, right? So this is over 50 minutes. After about an hour, you start thinking, I got to sell. You know, if I don't sell, I'm going to regret it. So eventually, even though the volume monitor says, hey, the activity's picking up, that was in the past. And the next minute, that can change instantly. Okay. So what's the moral of the story? What's the moral of the trade? I guess you could say, uh, if you entered here and you would enter uh, exit at two, you're, you're still kind of safe and actually you're still safe now. So price is here. You could still, let's say you said, let's say this is, you're just not comfortable with what's happening right now. You could still get out and you're in the green. Uh, now sometimes another scenario that plays out is that you'll buy here and it'll continue to monitor it. It'll continue to, to show up. And what I would do is maybe I would enter, I do my typical, I would do maybe 2.26. I'd enter, I'd exit 50% of my position and then I would ride it up. I'd buy this dip here and then ride it up 2%. And then I might still have this position open, just riding it up because I saw confirmation, I bought on the dip, and I'm like, there's no reason to sell this position yet. And anyways, I could just sell what I originally sold it at, and I'd be at the same percentage that I made before. So, you know, if I'm going to add to a position, I'm not adding to a losing position. I write it up, and then if I if I get verification, I would cash out 80% because the higher it goes up, the more the quicker it can fall. The higher it goes up, the quicker it falls. So I would do 80 to 90% of my position, let that ride, I might even take out this original position up here, right? Uh, just because the way I see these things play out. What usually ends up happening too is then it'll just stay and it'll trade sideways for a while here. That's usually what ends up happening. Or you'll see it do a massive dive and then it'll bounce back up and then it'll dive and then it'll kind of go back and forth and then it'll kind of find a support level and then it might just dip. So, uh, those are the scenarios that I've seen play out within within these these charts and using this scanner. Bottom line, it's a good scanner. I hope I didn't go on too much. I hope I provided enough value. Uh, I hope I was clear and concise. Let me recap and, and, and share what you want to do. The first time it pops up on this scanner, like Poe popped up. I don't trade Poe because I've been hurt a couple times in Poe. I think it's my arch nemesis in trading. Uh, so when it first pops up, you want to look at the chart, start watching it. Buy on the dip if you miss the first run up. Uh, you can buy on, on a green bar on the way up if, if you want. I've just not been successful at that. It's too risky for me. Buy on the first dip that you see. Position yourself good. And then as the next dip comes up, buy on that dip. Buy on each dip. Don't buy on the way up. And don't buy at the top. Always look at the bars. Look at see, look at where you're at over the long, frame, long time frame. Look. Look at where you're at here. This is a very dangerous trade because look at what happened. Look at uh, this last trade. Look at how far it fell off, right? So here's what happens psychologically with most of these. All right, so I just turned the video right back on here because as you can see here, here's what happened on the one minute bars. We go to three minutes here. You'll see that, look, it's, it's kind of, created what you would consider a base meaning that it's trading between this range here right so it's it's trading between this range here uh and a couple things to notice here is that it could just dive down to this support level here it could dive down to this support level here uh and it could also just bounce from here and go back up that's where if you're going to trade this, you want to then find the support levels that the chart is telling you and uh, and actually what the orders are at, the real orders, right? So if we go to WTC, uh, there might be support here if we actually go to the books here. Uh, what is this? Typical order is X. Okay. So... You might say that this is support here at three, three five seventy, and then you could enter right around three five seven, three five eighty one or something, right? Three five zero eight one, right? And let's look at that on the chart. So let's do, 
three, five, let's see what that is. This isn't real. The 17 isn't real. It's artificially there for the for the price, but there's at least a, a 1.5 that probably is real, right? That's probably really someone, meaning that someone that's looking to buy, right? So let me, and you can see there's people positioning it around there right now. So let's let's say that you entered here. We'll just look and see what that is on the chart. We'll go here and we'll do this. <clears throat> That's right around where I drew the support. So you see there's support here. Uh, it's weak support, but you could say there's support. So, and you can see as we scroll in, it's actually tested that a couple times, meaning that it bounced. Let me move this. It it tested this support a couple times. It bounced, it, it hit it, and then it bounced up. It hit it, it went b just below it, and it bounced up. So here's kind of where if you wanted to do this trade, it doesn't matter. I mean, it does matter a little bit because if, if the price goes below this, this is this is a tick mark. So some people might see that as a bad sign. But the way to look at it is that if you enter the trade right here, right? Just above where it previously bounced, right? So there's problem. So there's support there on the books you already saw. Your other support, you you would reason that there's other support at this level as well because it's it's bounced a couple times from this place on the three minute chart. We'd want to look at the five minute, and it has. So you'll see here it bounced on the five minute, ten minute. Probably gets a little wanky. But that's a that's a ten minute kind of support you could call right. That's this is the trade you want to enter. This is how you want to enter if you're going to enter this trade. Now we're down on the ten minutes, so that probably means that uh, most likely if this is still has activity and people are still interested, it, it's probably going to have a bounce, right? So this is where you look at the three minute, and if everything I saw, I'm not watching this chart, so it's hard. I mean, I'm watching it now, but I'm not watching everything, right? Usually, like I said, I am, I'm watching the price action. I'm watching a couple different things. Uh, so I everything I see right now, this would, this would be a trade I would consider entering here. Uh, my concern right now, though, is that uh, as you see this bar unfold, uh, this candle, uh, what's happening is that it's, it's not, there's not a, a, a shadow. This is actually where the price is. So there's a battle happening right here. We go to the one minute chart. There's a battle happening right here. Now it might not be much of a battle, meaning that it might not, there just might be no one interested in buying or selling and they're just not meeting the price amongst each other really quick. But there's, there's just uncertainty at this price right now of like it's not moving. See, I like to see, well, okay, it started moving up. So I like to see this. I like to see, because what this means is that when you see these little uh, shadows, that means that it hit that and then it, it, it rejected that price and it closed above it. Even though it still closed down, it closed above it. Here, it closed above it. So now you'll see here, it's kind of rejected this upside and it's back down to where it rejected here. Now this could go against us real quick. This could basically say, "Hey, I'm going to, I, I, you know what? We're going to finally break through this little weak resistance you've been having up here for the last few minutes, and then the next thing you're going to look at is here. This is your next support level. If it goes below that, get out of the trade. Just get out of the trade." Be very impatient. This is something that I wish I would have done when I first started. Be very impatient with your losses. If if it goes beyond two support levels that you've drawn, you're wrong. Okay, so you need to look at it that way. I, I've drawn two support levels. I believe based on everything that's happened with this chart, this is a support level and this is a support level. If it breaks through this, I've been wrong twice. What makes me think that I'm going to be right here, right? Because the next support level I would draw would be here. And, you know, let's say that it, it does. Uh, and uh, I would be looking at this. By the time I got there, I'm down 3% on a trade that I'm usually out 25 to 3%, right? 
It's a one-to-one -one ratio. I don't know what the risk management and all that other stuff is. But to me, if I've been wrong twice, so I'm already wrong once, okay? I'm wrong. The market has told me that I'm wrong. Here's my support. Now, once again, I'd be watching the monitor. So I'd be watching this monitor. And say, and, and I, since I haven't seen WTC pop up again, I would be saying, well, um, I think this might have petered out for, for, for a while, right? Now, of course, I'd be watching this, but it looks to be trailing down. It looks like uh, the, uh, the, the sellers have taken control. You can see here there's still a 34 Bitcoin on 3460. So I might be watching that at 3460, which is, which is well above where I've drawn support here. Okay. So once again, so that, that artificial support, that artificial buy wall is here, right? And if, if it goes past here, I've been wrong twice. I need to get out of the trade. I can't, I can't stress that enough because what most people will do is they'll say, well, there's another support here. And it will, it's got to bounce from here, right? It's got to bounce. And then I'll just wait for that bounce. And then instead of being down, uh, you know, instead of being down, what, 2%, it'll bounce here and it'll bounce back up here and I'll only be down 1%. Wrong way to look at it. The right way to look at it is that you drew support and based on what you saw in the chart and it proved you wrong, you're wrong right now. And it's about to prove me wrong again, so I'd be I'd be looking to get out. Now, keep in mind that what it can do right here is it can just shoot up, right? And it can go up. The other thing that it can do is it can go back here, and then it could never get beyond this support again, okay? And if it trades too much in this range, uh, I, I get out just because, look, uh... Yeah, it might still have an upside to it, but at the bottom line, it, it's too much of a risk, right? You could say, well, if it's just trading sideways, why wouldn't I just let it trade sideways and wait for the upside? I look at opportunity cost, right? Uh, this, the upside here for me to ride, see, I'm looking to, uh, what I'm looking to do when I trade these is I'm looking to trade multiple times and, you know, make a trade hopefully right here and ride it up to like here, right? And then trade here, you know, do three or four trades. I'm looking to do three or four trades. And I might, if, if everything looked good here, I might have still trade, like I said, I'd be, I'd be in this trade, but I, but I would not re-enter here. I would not say, well, this is support, let me ride it back up. I already have a losing trade on the books. I'm not gonna add to a losing trade, okay? So I would, you know, You'll see here it did did exactly what I what I just said. Remember, this is why it's so important to have two support lines on your entry. I have a support line here that I that I felt was support, and then a support line here. And see this support line where that artificial buy wall was, basically it it bumped from here. Now what is it doing? It's doing kind of what I said before. It's basically if we move this over, it's basically just playing around with this support line here. And it might bounce through. It, it So it's looking to. It's already popped up here. Now, let's say that you weren't comfortable with this trade. You could get out right now and basically not have any loss. I mean, you're going to you, you'll be at a point one four plus, you know, your little fee uh, loss. But you've got your capital back. You can go. You can go day trade Bitcoin or, or you know, ETH or something else, right? Uh, you don't you don't have to be in this trade anymore because what I was trying to say before is that it's opportunity cost. While I'm I'm babying this trade here that's you know bouncing between these two support lines and I don't know what it and it's not deciding what it wants to do. The buyers aren't really excited anymore. They moved on to the next thing, maybe Poe or something else. I saw Poe, you know, pop up here. Maybe they jumped over to Poe or maybe since XVG, well, these are both negative numbers, so you wouldn't. But maybe they saw Poe and they're like, oh, wow, Poe's. And then so they they jumped from WTC over to Poe or whoever, whatever happened. I don't know. It could be a thousand other reasons, right? Uh, it doesn't matter. 
right now the chart's telling me that buyers just aren't excited anymore. They might get excited one more time or maybe later on, but right now the next, you know, 20 or 30 minutes, do I really want to be sitting here watching a position that's going between, you know, my two support levels that might bounce up to here, right? 1.34%. Uh, it does have potential obviously to go up, but my opportunity cost is too valuable to be just sitting here watching this. So I've been proven wrong. I consider myself already proven wrong twice here. Okay. Meaning that the buyers didn't super react to this and, and let's, and I'm going on 50 minutes. Jeez, I'm sorry. So hopefully these are, this is valuable, but the buyers reacted here. Look at this. They hit the support and I said, huh, no, it's worth more than this. I'm going to, I'm going to keep buying all the way up to here. The buyers reacted here. They're like, oh, no, it's worth more than that. And they reacted to here, you know, 3%. The buyers so far, they've kind of like reacted a little bit. And they're they're starting to kick in more. So, you know, you might want to still be in this trade. And this is where I'd be watching it. But by, by now, if it ticked back down, I'd get out of the trade. So if it goes back down, I'd get out of the trade. I might even get out now. But it depends on what's happening. Once again, this is such a, I'm not watching it like like I usually do. So it's... I'm I'm kind of handicapped a little bit right now because I'm not watching uh, I'm not bouncing between the three minutes I'm not bouncing between the one minutes right I'm just watching this one screen and you got to watch the price action what you really got to do is you got to make sure that you're watching what's happening on the chart here and here you know and if you want a visual representation you got to watch here so if I saw this order here for 350 and I see a lot of people jumping ahead and it looks like this is a real order, um, you know, like you'll see this order is actually going through, you know, I might stay in this and I actually probably would right now what I'm, what I'm seeing right here. So this is why you have to kind of watch this. Now I know I can watch it over here in this, right? I just find this harder to read. This is harder to read than actually on the actual exchange. This is what kind of sucks about this sometimes. I got to get used to reading it over there. But I might stay in this trade, but you can see here, it's just kind of trading sideways. It's just kind of like there's no super activity. So, you know, I'm 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 just hesitant to even, even the, the volume's trending down, you know. So it's just, you know, as you can see here, the volume's trending down. It's petering out. So to me, I'd be out because it went down. Yeah, there might still be an upside here, but you know, Bitcoin is just dropped a hundred in the last hour. And if I would have been, I would have bought at that opportunity and then I'd already be up like $97 right now. So, uh, and I probably would have been out and then seen what would, what, where it's going to find support again. So this is where, like, once again, uh, opportunity costs, right? You can sit here and trade this back and forth, wait for it to break out again, get out. You should be happy that you didn't, that, that it actually bounced from your second support here and it bounced up to your original price. Instead of breaking through your support and going to another support, once again, if it broke through this second report, so support, sorry, you should get out. Don't even question it, get out. It broke through two of your supports that you said were support, get out. And that it trailed back up to your original price. Don't hold on to it unless, you know, you feel that there's a huge upside. And if we go back here, uh, there's not a huge upside because look, as with anything, it goes up and it falls pretty hard. It goes up and it falls pretty hard, right? So here, total price action here, 15.1%. And then within the next couple hours, it fell down 10.3, okay? Here, it went up. Well, it went up and it actually stayed up. So, you know, it could be reaching this type of peak. But statistically, when it goes up, and that's, remember, I'm looking at 19 hours here. This is 19 hours of price action here. So this here is 11 hours of price action right so this here that's three hours of drop okay so that's three hours of price action right there 
Now, keep in mind, it went, went from kind of this support all the way up to here, or you could say this support from here. But I, I count this support because it, it broke through that support pretty easily. So this is so it, it went from here all the way up to here. Now, if you're swing trading, that's a great swing trade. If you enter here and you swing trade all the way up here, that's 32% over the course of three or four days, right? That's not bad. That's pretty good. Here, same here. If you would have bought here and you would have rode this wave up, you're at 20, 20 some odd percent over the course of two days, right? The way to look at this chart right now, and we're only looking at a small time frame, you would want to look at all of this and see how it plays out historically, is that based on what I see in this chart, it's got nowhere to but, but down to go. Yeah, it might trace up a little bit more, but it's got nowhere but down to go. It really does, based on the historical numbers of this chart. Every time it shoots up, it pretty much goes down over the next couple of hours pretty pretty hard. So you, I, I can't stress this enough. Get out of the trade if you were in the trade. So 2% uh, is where, when I'm doing these day trades, I keep it at 2%. If I'm doing swing trades, it depends on where I enter. I might be out at 4 or 5%. It depends on the chart and everything else. But you'll see here, we're just playing around with this this price between here and there and we're still not yet to our price so you know opportunity costs you can uh and i'll say this again i already said it instead of sitting here watching this trade or if you're doing two or three other trades that are going sideways get out of them and trade something that actually is moving maybe bitcoin or something else right or eth trade i mean you can trade those and those have typically uh, opportunity at any given day no matter what's happening in an altcoin or instead of finding another altcoin just trade those so that's that's my suggestion that's what i do hopefully this video helped uh i'm sorry it's an hour long uh any feedback please share